Hello, I'm Mr. Gale. This is a savings AER worked example, and this is a difficult one where we need to work in reverse. This is very much at the top end of the core maths difficulty level, I suppose. Um, so if you find this one tricky, then I wouldn't worry about it. This isn't the standard level of questions. This is just one of those top end ones, just so you've seen it. So here's the question. Mandeep invests £2,000 into an account that pays interest quarterly. She does not add or withdraw any money from the account for one year. At the end of the year, there is £2,098 in the account. Calculate to the nearest penny how much was in the account after three months. So there's quite a lot going on here. Only four lines of text. The second line is important, but we can largely ignore it. So she doesn't add or withdraw any money from the account for a year. Good. That would make things incredibly complicated if she did. So we can sort of ignore that bit really, but £2,000 has gone up to £2,098 and it's been in for a year. So let's start with that. It's increased by £98 divided by the original amount of 2000 multiplied by 100. So it's gone up by 4.9% in a year. So that means the AER would have been 4.9%. A is 4.9%. So we can use this formula to help us work out what the nominal rate would be. So we know the AER, that's R. We don't know I, but we do know N. N is 4. It's going to get quite algebraic now. If you enjoyed solving equations in GCSE, great. If you didn't, sorry, deal with it. So substitute in some bits. AER 0.049, remember it has to be written as a decimal, so uh, 4.9 divided by 100, 0.049. I've replaced the ends with 4 because the compounding interest was, uh, sorry, compounding period was quarterly. That means it happens four times a year. So I just have to solve this equation to work out what I is. There's quite a few steps. First thing is to add 1 to both sides. So if I add 1 to this side, it goes away, and adding 1 to that side is not too bad. Next I'm going to need to get rid of this power of 4 and to undo a power of 4 we have to do the fourth root. So it's the fourth root of 1.049. I don't know what that is but calculator will deal with that later. I'm not going to do it now because there's a danger that I'll write down a, a shortened version, a rounded version and then I might lose some accuracy points. Uh, this is 1 plus i over 4. I don't want that 1 there so I just need to take away 1. And then i divided by 4 is that. So if I multiply that by 4, that will tell me what i is. So this thing times 4 gives me i. And you can type that into a calculator. It might take a bit of fiddling around, but there's a you'll find that button there somewhere. It won't say fourth. It probably will say either just have a, a gap or it might have a y in there. Yth root of x might be a button. Uh, we get that i is 0 0.0481245. Uh, just so I don't lose any accuracy, I'm going to keep it that far, that many decimal places for the time being. It's almost certainly more than I need, but because I've got a calculator, it's not too hard to deal with that anyway. Right, we've got the AER was that. The nominal interest rate is this. And the way the nominal interest rate works is you do your nominal interest rate divided by how many compounding periods there are, which is 4. So the 0 0.0481245 divided by 4. That's where that bit comes from. Then we add it onto 1, just because that's how compounding interest works. Add it onto 1 to get a multiplier. Um, hopefully it's obviously times by 2,000, because that's the amount invested. The one up here is possibly one of the more difficult parts. Um, we're asked to work it out after three months. Well. After three months, that's the end of the first quarter. So there will only be one compounding period after three months. That's why this is a power of one. And now that we've got that far, the last bit is just typing it into a calculator. Turns out if you type all that in, you get 2,024 pounds and six pence to the nearest penny. Right, very difficult question. Well done if you followed that. And if you're a teacher, you might like to find more resources. So there's my TS resource website. And also you can follow me on Twitter.